Uh, hi everyone. So in this video, we are going to take a look on the configurations, what all we can pass and we'll just deploy it. Okay. So I will just start with the very basic. So this is something global and here we are going to write our own functions, right? So how these functions are configured? If you see, I have a handler.js. So I'm saying handler.hello. What we have in the handler is this hello function, right? Module.export hello is the function name and same function name is defined here and I mean this can be anything the handler for this function name is this okay so what all kind of configurations we can add for a lambda there are a lot many like memory size the timeout right uh, concurrency reserved concurrency provision concurrency right so if you are specifying anything here like memory size let's say if I specify memory size 128 it will convert into 128 MB then this will be applied globally to all the lambda functions until unless you go and change it to your particular lambda and say okay I need 512 MB here okay this applies for any particular rule here I'm specifying memory size I'm specifying timeout let's say timeout is 10 so globally it is 10 second but for this particular lambda I'm saying okay I need only three second right so in a particular lambda you can actually override the the timeout configuration memory configurations and all the, the relevant configurations right now how we can write multiple functions uh, simple right uh, we have the function which is a function one similarly we can add uh, function two it just you need to write a proper YML so let's call it as a function one and here we can call this as a function two okay I did some mistake so we are calling it as a function two with the same set of configuration here handler can point to a different function module dot exports right so here we can write another function and we can point it to there so that depends on your when you have multiple functions then ideally you should create a folder let's say I have a lambda folder inside this I can just put this handler and first handler I will say function one similarly I will just copy it and paste it for the function two so now we have function one and function two so here the handler right handler we don't have handler directly in the the root so we have to do lambda forward slash function one instead of handler now it will become function one and we can still have the handler name as hello similarly this will become function two and there is a hello function right so function one and function two there are two functions both are targeting to two different lambdas so now our application will deploy two different lambdas and we don't need 512 MBs and all these things default timeout if you are doing some asynchronous request then always keep the default timeout more than three seconds because sometimes timeout will happen so global timeout you can keep 10 seconds and memory size is 128 MB that is not much okay you can add the other things like the description which is optional property after handler like what this function is actually doing that you can add and you, you can keep adding these functions function 1 2 3 4 up to 10 if you have 10 functions right the only thing is how you are writing your lambda so lambda typical code of lambda is something like this right uh, if you have seen this in our previous example handler is the file name and then there is a function name right so in this particular case what we will do is if that is the case here we will just put handler if that handler is in the root handler dot dot the function one 
right? Then handler dot function two, something like this. So it depends on what function name we are doing in our code, and is there any particular directory also there that we can follow? Okay. So there are other things which we will also talk about, like the provider property and all we have already seen. So provider is like your AWS, Azure, it can be anything inside the services. Okay, the memory size, runtime, runtime is like to which Node.js version you wanted to deploy your Lambda. Okay, memory size and all these things we have seen. In the functions, you can also do the referencing. Referencing means like uh, instead of writing all these, you can just simply say, I want to actually introduce these two files. I, I really like this approach because when you have a lot of YML files, then you can actually do this something like this. So here there are foo function dot YML and bar function dot YML, and you can actually create your separate YML where you will not be specifying a lot of things. Dot YML. So it will look whatever the handler you need, like get foo and this is the handler for that. I mean handler now in our case is lambda function one dot hello, lambda function two dot hello, right? So what we will do is we'll just look at these basic configurations. Now next, I mean I will deploy this. I will, we can have a two test functions, function one, function two. We will test it by deploying. Next thing is the permissions. Permissions means your Lambda wants to talk to Dynamo, wants to talk to S3, wants to talk to SQS, SNS. How you can specify the permission and IAM role for your Lambda in the serverless.py. That we will see in the next video. Uh, thanks everyone.